And welcome back to coverage here of the Strixhaven Championship. Marshall Seckliff with Paul Chion. Thanks so much for coming along here. We're entering the last round of the day. It's going to be standard. Paul, you won't be surprised to hear that Seth Manfield is undefeated coming into the round with his Prismari deck. But on the other side of the battlefield is Maddie Quizma, who decided to sleeve up this bizarre uh, Jeskai Mutate kind of combo deck. And he actually is undefeated as well. Maddie, you know, uh, is somebody who we've seen at the high level, so he certainly knows how to pilot a deck. But this, if you threw this list at me, I would have been like, yeah, probably don't do that. But apparently it's working. Mar Marshall, when when I found out that there was a Jeskai Mutate combo deck, <laughs> the, at first I was excited because it sounded kind of cool. And then I tried to play it and I was just <laughs> thinking, okay, what am I doing? Uh, I spent way too much time figuring out how to play the deck. Um, fizzled a few times. <laughs> um, but but I think I have a decent understanding of what the deck's trying to do. And, um, I mean, a, a lot, the thing about this deck is, um, you know, you have that infinite combo built in where, uh, you know, you get Goldspan Dragon. Uh, if Maddie does get the combo going, we'll kind of talk through it. But, you know, th there is an infinite combo loop then where eventually you generate infinite mana and you can, you can kill your opponent with Prismari Command. However, the thing about the deck is it, it actually just does a good job of... Uh, uh, of just playing Goldspan Dragon and just protecting it at all costs, right? Because okay. you have so many cheap spells that can actually protect the dragon. You have four copies of Unsubstantiate and then some copies of Sajiri Shelter along with Negate, meaning that it's very, very likely if Goldspan Dragon resolves that you're going to be able to protect it. And then once you protect it, once you start getting a mutate value chain going onto the Goldspan Dragon, you just end up outvaluing your opponents. I've won a fair amount of my games just by kind of just overwhelming my opponent with card advantage, just by mm. having the dragon in play and just buying back a lot of the important spells out of my graveyard. Kind of interesting because, you know, looking at Seth's list, well, it, it can have a similar game plan of get a gold span dragon down and maybe have some counter magic or something up to protect it, to let it keep doing its thing. What do you give up by playing the, the mutate version uh, of a gold span dragon deck? What's the what's the weakness? Well, you have to play cards like seize the spoil. <laughs> but uh, okay, that's a little rough. <laughs> uh, no, no um, I, I think Seth's deck is uh, better at controlling um, kind of aggression, right? Mm -hmm. you're, you're allowed to play four copies of Frostbite. You're playing a bunch of uh, a Bone Crusher Giant. So I think I think the the um, the Is It Dragons deck is better suited against aggressive strategies. Um, but at the same time, Maddie's deck, I think, uh, lines up a lot better against Saltai, actually. When I played against the Saltai deck, um, because the Saltai deck doesn't have a whole lot of counter magic and really mm -hmm. relies on its removal spells, the fact that this deck is so good at protecting the Goldspan Dragon meant that it was really hard um, for Sultai decks to kind of reasonably interact or deal with kind of that mutate chain that you're going for. So if you decide to play this deck, I think you get a really big leg up against specifically the Sultai Ultimatum deck. Okay. Well, both players kind of jockeying for position here. Nobody's really done anything too crazy. A couple of spells have been foretold here by Seth Manfield. He's got the one-two punch there. He's got the counter spell with Sock coming and the late game spell with Auron's Epiphany on the other side of the battlefield. Sees the spoils. Kind of been what we've seen. Here's a Prismari command, though. This is uh, one of the more popular modes to use. I draw two, discard two, I get a treasure. Yeah, Maddie just trying to sculpt a, a reasonable hand here. Um, but, you know, doesn't have a whole lot to work with here. But the thing with this deck is it, it feels like you're not doing a whole lot. And then out of nowhere, once you find the Goldspan Dragon, all of a sudden, you know, the, all the fireworks happen, right? You you, mm -hmm. you start slapping on mutates onto, onto the dragon, and then you just start drawing a ton of cards. Once you get, especially, the, the key is once you get the second mutate creature onto the dragon, that's when, you know, things just get really out of hand. Looks like the lands are flowing for both players here. You see Fire Prophecy, Vadrock, Scorching, Dragonfire, and Spike Field Hazard in hand here for Maddie. Down on the bottom, well, that's a pretty stocked hand here for Seth Manfield. You see key card in the deck, Goldspan Dragon. Could just run one out here, would be a bit risky uh, for Seth. So 
he may decide to uh, develop his hand and or mana with expressive iteration or maybe even just put another Alrun's Epiphany into Fortel Zone rather than, uh, than just going for it. And there it is, ex expressive iteration. Yeah. The, the, there, were, there were some... Oof, that Ooh, is... No land. That's really, really... Yeah, I mean, I imagine you're going to want all the counter spells in this matchup as you are effectively, essentially playing against a combo deck here. And it's really hard, at least game one, for this Jeskai Mutate deck to fight through all that counter magic because the only thing that you really need to counter is the Goldspan Dragon. Sure, you can play the other creatures out like Vadrock, but a lot of those creatures you can just answer immediately with Frostbite because all the other creatures in the deck have three toughness. Pretty rough there for Manfield is he's really just gonna get the one card into hand. Um, he could cast either of the two adventure creatures when they were exiled there, but that would leave him completely shields down. He decided against it. So, you know, you really do hope to get the, the two cards of value out of your expressive iteration. And as we mentioned before, it almost feels like you got robbed when you don't. Yeah. The problem here, though, is Maddie is still... still a couple of cards short here, right? The thing mm -hmm. is, he's going to need to find a Goldspan Dragon and probably some way to protect it as well, uh, or, or, or find some way to fight through these counter spells that, that Seth Manfield kind of has um, exiled here. So um, this is just a, a lot for Matty to fight through. And Seth, you know, once he gets to seven mana, he could th now consider running out of Goldspan Dragon and keeping up Solid Coming. Yeah, it looks like that's the plan here. And if he gets to, you know, get through this next turn sequence with the Goldspan Dragon up. You gotta love his chances here. He has access to two Alrun's Epiphanies. Double saw it coming. Yeah, and this is rough because Maddie's gonna need to use two removal spells yeah. to get the Goldspan Dragon off the battlefield, meaning that's two treasures here for Seth Manfield. And uh, given that, I mean, you have to imagine that he's going to want to kind of protect this Goldspan Dragon here. Yeah, the only good news for Maddie is that he actually does have the three removal spells available that he's going to need if Seth decides to use the Sot coming to protect his dragon here. But he's not. He's just going to let okay. it go. All right, just playing it slower. I mean, he does have a ton of mana available. And um, hmm. really, really just, if, you know, if the key to the matchup is just counter Goldspan Dragon, well, I mean, he's got the double Sot coming here. So uh, Maddie's got that negate. He's going to want the Goldspan Dragon, but he's going to need one more card on top of that to be able to execute his game plan. We could see Seth here just kind of go for a, a cheeky Alrun's Epiphany here. Just put a couple of flyers onto the battlefield, still have a couple of side comings uh, exiled, right? And that allows you to put some pressure on Maddie's life total. And again, if Matt. Two twos add up. Exactly, and if Maddie does choose to go for a negate here, I, I, I imagine Seth's just going to let that resolve again, you know? And the next turn, he can just go Alrun's Epiphany again and just kind of run Maddie out of counter spells. Now, keep in mind, game one, this Jeskai Mutate deck doesn't have a lot of actual uh, counters. It's got the two negates and one Mystical Dispute um, as kind of the ways to counter spells. Sure, it's got four copies of Unsubstantiate, but that's a, a temporary measure, if anything. Well, the, Maddie the, has a negate here. Yeah. The best case scenario for Unsubstantiate is just having a, a, a free way to bounce and protect your Goldspan Dragon while also being a key part in the combo that um, we alluded to earlier. If you want a very in-depth analysis of how to actually execute the combo... It is available on the Magic.gg website. Frank Karsten wrote an article about it, uh, going through all the lines. It is highly convoluted, extremely technical to actually pull off. And um, if you're going to pick up this deck for the first time, you might misclick a, f uh, a few times. This is uh, coming from somebody with personal experience um, <laughs> trying out the deck. Yeah, thank God for Frank. <laughs> <laughs> And as you can see, uh, Seth Manfield, in lieu of any other threats, has decided just to build up a board of 1-1 one, one bird tokens. He's going to end up with four of them if this Alrun's Epiphany resolves, and it looks like it will kind of no matter what. He's really kind of flooded out here and just needs to do something. And yeah, 
you know, getting four one ones on the board or at least get something going for for Seth. Give him another bite at the apple here as well uh, with the draw step. Maddie declined to negate the original Alruns Epiphany, but it looks like the second one might be drawing his attention. Yeah, I mean, this is going to double the double the clock here, right? And um... no, he's going to let it go. Yeah, double the clock and get an extra card as well. And it's a Brazen Borrower. It feels like Maddie's going to have a really hard time doing any type of mutate nonsense. I mean, his hand isn't set up for it right now. He's got double Vadrock and that's it. But even if he air quotes gets lucky and finds them, I mean, he's going to have to work through petty theft and double hard counter. Like, ugh, that's not going to happen. Yeah, this definitely does feel like one of the more difficult matchups for the Jeskai Mutate deck. I think the you know th this 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 is a dragon's deck just maximizes on interaction right mm -hmm. you've got all the bounce effects you can bounce with brazen borrower you can counter uh you can play things at instant speed to put pressure on your opponent uh shields down will just almost never occur when you're playing this deck so ooh, all right there's, there's a couple finds gold span dragon and an expressive iteration so iteration will kick off the festivities here for maddie yeah, and Maddie here just digging for more uh, protection spells here if possible. Ooh, look at this. Seth refusing to use Saw It Coming on a bunch of good stuff. Particularly, he could have uh, tried to protect his land there to get in for a lot quicker of a clock and said, no, I'm not going to do it. But now on expressive iteration, he's going to fire it off. Well, so now there's only one counter spell, right? So Maddie next turn can play Goldspan Dragon and negate the saw it coming That's right. that Seth Manfield has. Wow, and look at that. Oh. Seth Manfield goes for Brazen Borrower. Oh, there's the stainful stroke, stroke. To, to basically lock it up here, right? He's yep. got exactly seven power out, and Maddie just has to go for it now, and yep, uh, he will not win this fight. Yeah, just go for the stroke with the saw it coming back up, and... Uh, yeah, that should lock it up. And the gate finally drawn here for Maddie, who's been trying to patiently wait. But uh, then the gate will resolve, but saw it coming is going to hit the dragon. And with a tapped out Maddie Quizma, that's going to be game number one going to Seth Manfield. Patience, patience, patience. He, he was waiting and waiting for all those counters to find the right targets. He finally did, and Seth gets the job done. Oof, that was a nice rip by him, though. Things would have got very interesting if that wasn't a, a, a hard counter there off the top. Yeah. And after sideboard, um, the the as you can see, maddie has got a ton of cards available here and really not looking to kind of go for the infinite mana combo anymore, going down to one comp copy of Unsubstantiate mm -hmm. and really just choosing to kind of play more of... I mean... It, almost, almost evolving into a mirror. I want to say, right? Mm, mm -hmm. You, you, you have, you have your threats, right? You have your Vadrox and your Goldspan Dragons, but then you're just boarding into a bunch of counter spells. A slot, right? Seth Manfield has Brazen Borrowers and Bone Crusher Giants, whereas Matt has the Mutate creatures instead. Right, put in the finishing touches here on uh, the sideboard for Seth Manfield, as we see Maddie has submitted. Yeah, and a big card coming into this event with kind of the, the big rise in popularity of the Is It Dragons deck is you're seeing people really kind of load up on Red Cat Melee as a sideboard card. If you look at Maddie's sideboard, he's got three copies of this card uh, in mm -hmm. his sideboard. Uh, originally a card that, you know, everybody used to love to have, of course, against Mono Red Aggro, but now I think more specifically, you want this card for this matchup, any Goldspan Dragon deck. Yeah, being able to, to take down that dragon for just the one red mana, it's about as good as it gets, especially when it always comes down to counter fights around them, since, you know, the, the dragon's really built for that, right? Because it, it comes down and gives you effectively two mana to use on a counter spell to protect it, and that's 
what people have been trying to leverage from that card ever since, and it works. That's a real thing. Fabled Passage kicked things off for Manfield. Raugen Triumph for Matty Quizma. It's his turn now, though. He plays a Mountain is just going to be happy with passing the turn back. Seth's going to go ahead and crack the passage and get things underway for him. Yeah, we're going to see a whole lot of nothing for a while here mm -hmm. based on the complexion of both of the players' hands. So you saw it coming hit the Ooh. exile zone here on Fortel. Maddie's going to be pretty happy about that uh, so that he can resolve this uh, expressive iteration. Find more lands here. Ooh, got one. Yeah, that's pretty nice. The Phoenix of Ash also just a nice little threat to have. Mm -hmm. As so he's trying to decide whether he wants the Red Cap Melee in his hand or the Phoenix of Ash in his hand. Right, and uh, currently he doesn't have an answer to the Goldspan Dragon mm -hmm. in hand. So, you know, that would be the argument to, to ha keep the Red Cap Melee. Also, the... Um, You know, I mean, the thing is with this hand, it's just highly reactive, and he does have three mana creatures that he can play. So maybe uh, he would put less of an emphasis on that Phoenix of Ash. Does seem to be the case. It's always nice to have answers that said, you know, we're not going to see um, a Goldspan Dragon anytime soon here for Manfield. I think Seth... I, I... All right, choosing choosing to play it a little... Carefully, just wondering how Maddie could potentially punish him there um, if Seth just foretold the sod coming here because the, the key number, the key casting cost is five. That's mm -hmm. when you don't want to uh, leave yourself vulnerable. Another land off the top of the library here. See, Manfield has access to Faceless Haven in this deck. But it looks like he's going to go for Fabled Passage here. Yeah, a lot of the way this matchup plays out after Cyborg is, you know, you just have both players kind of jockeying for position, loading up their hand full of counter spells and removal, trying to hit their land drops. And, you know, you're just going to see players just, you know, playing expressive iterations, finding Maze Mind Tomes, and, uh, you know, finding good opportunities here and there to try to put something in play at instant speed, especially on Seth's side, because he does have access to those Brazen Borrowers. Expressive Iteration, but he's going to play a land, which means that he's not going to play ex Expressive Iteration this time around. He yeah, does have two counters available. Given that Maddie's hand is just completely loaded right now, I think Seth just need, just wants to make sure that he has access to at least two counter spells before running out the Iteration. I got to say, these games have played out pretty similarly here. Uh, Manfield just having all the time in the world to kind of set up exactly what he wants. He, he's also happened to have drawn multiple Sot Cummings both times. This time he'd still like the ability to leave up two counters so he can have Sot coming plus Negate. Yeah, and if you're Maddie, you know, if you're looking at what Maddie has, you know, he really doesn't want to just kind of run out those three mana creatures that he has in hand. Ideally, you really want to be mutating those cards onto a, a Goldspan Dragon. That's kind of really what this deck is looking to do. You get a pretty sweet battle cruiser if you get those things on there, or is it? Oh, it's the ultimate this? battle cruiser. Everything is just so cheap. Yeah, you know, that's all your sweet. all your protection spells are essentially free with mm. Goldspan Dragon. So. The, 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 the difficult part, especially in this matchup, is just sticking one, right? Just getting one right. to resolve. That is the hard part. Yeah, I mean, how much mana would Maddie like to have? So five for the dragon. What do you need? Three, four extra mana to be able to get into a little counter fight? Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's rough. I mean, some decks do choose to play uh, Shark Typhoon, right? Because that allows you to just put a big creature out there and kind of force your opponent to react. I don't know if Maddie has access to that. It doesn't look like he's playing any. But, I mean, he did look at that Phoenix of Ash, right? Mm -hmm. That was a card that you could consider because, you know, you're going to fill up your graveyard with a bunch of cards, right? You know, you're, mm -hmm. you're cycling and 
fling some stuff here and there. And the Phoenix of Ash is a cheap threat that, sure, Seth could have Stomp, right? But eventually, you're just, uh, eventually, it's very likely that that card will stick. Oh. What do you see in Sajiri Shelter? What was that, a gold span? That's a gold span dragon. Okay. However, your Izzet opponent has six cards in hand. Yeah, I mean, this has been a crazy game. Nothing has happened. Like, nobody's yeah. played any. It's all set up, set up, set up, set up. And then we're going to have this big flurry. And whoever comes out with their own gold span dragon and the ability to protect it is probably going to win the game. But in the meantime, it's just set up. Yep. You're just going to have a very, Ooh. very big turn. Ooh. Missed. Well, he's he, he'll probably just go ahead and put um, a bone crusher in his hand and then just cast another expressive iteration. Although that would leave himself very vulnerable. I don't know if he wants to do that, actually. Yeah, if he hits the land, he could still have two counters, but if he, if he misses or it's a tap land or something. Right, because if you cast the iteration and don't find a blue source, you're just down to one counter spell, which Maddie could very easily play around. Yeah, it's funny, because when you're playing cards like um, expressive iteration, but you're also playing Faceless Haven, you can really see how they can kind of conflict. Not that, not that you shouldn't, but there is a cost there for sure. Yeah, the mana definitely for... The, uh, the is it deck is not ideal. But uh, we've seen the Faceless Haven just take down so many games, so it is definitely worth the cost, but it does put you in some awkward situations at times. Okay, it was Fire Prophecy that went into Exile with no target around for that. And I could potentially see Maddie looking to try to find another protection spell here, a counter spell of some sort, Potentially run out a Prismari Command, draw two, discard two, and put a treasure token onto the battlefield. That'll mm. also give him a bit of a mana advantage, right? Because you can use that treasure to, you know, potentially be able to win a counter counter fight. The problem is he's the one that has to invest the first five mana onto the Goldspan Dragon, while Seth has, you know, these two mana counter spells that can easily deal with the card. Yeah, Maddie's going to need to get over the hump on that total mana issue and if he can do so you can see his hand looks pretty darn nice but this is a good window right because seth has tapped two mana this turn mm -hmm. right the situation might not get better right so this might be the turn where you're like okay seth's blue mana is tapped his red mana is tapped he only can play two counter spells at best this probably is one of the best windows that i'll get to try to get some value going with my gold span dragon Mm. He found another copy of Vadruk and then an island. So he would like to hit that land drop, wouldn't he? Right. Hmm. Well, I'm looking at that card over on the left, the one in a red. I don't know what it is. It's probably <laughs> um, what? Scorching Dragonfire or Fire Prophecy, but I think I'm getting rid of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's really interesting is Seth actually can't double counter. Oh, no, he can negate the counter, of course. But he mm. cannot cast mm -hmm. two Saw It Cummings this turn. No. No, he cannot. Is he just passing? Yeah, he's going to play the Spike Field All Hazard right. and just ship it back. Ooh, there's a land off the top now for Seth. That said, he may have just gone for the expressive iteration this turn anyway. Yeah, I, I don't think you want to iteration this turn now, mm. only because you're going to have to discard at this point. Right. Because he has so many cards in hand, and he, you know, with double side coming, negate, red cat melee, and soul seer, uh, probably fine. Yeah, that extra blue source very handy here as well. And, and now Seth we is have... going to very carefully use his <laughs> colorless only producers, <laughs> the two faceless havens, to now set up a triple counter spell situation. Yeah, I mean this this is so so tough to fight through. It's so funny because still neither player has, you know, put anything and no creatures, no planeswalkers. It looks like Maddie is going to try to get something going here. Oh, okay. Badrock's Apex of Thunder goes on the stack. 
And Seth does have a clean answer here in the Fire Prophecy, so probably going to let it resolve. Yeah, that's just too tempting to be able to get a little Fire Prophecy off here. Yeah, and now he can safely cast Expressive Iteration next turn. His hand is really good, too. I don't know if he's putting anything back. <laughs> Maybe the Soul Seer, right? Because he's got the Red Cat Melee and three counter spells. Mm hmm. Nope. Nope. <laughs> he wants all of them. And Maddie must just be like, really? Oh, geez. Just the perfects. All right. Red Cat Melee off the top as well means that a Goldspan Dragon on the other side of the battlefield is going to have a really difficult time sticking. There's. An island now, as Maze well Mind Tome as is big. yeah, Maze Mind Tome. He's going to send Galaseth Prismanfield back down into the library. <laughs> oh no! Yeah, it's happening. <laughs> I will not acknowledge this. <laughs> uh. <laughs> you already did, buddy. <laughs> Maze Mind Tome is going to stay in hand here once again. You can see the level of uh, conservatism here by by Seth. He is just never going to leave those shields down any time for anything. Yeah, again, this this Jeskai Mutate deck is is quite strong against removal spells, but a deck that's playing, you know, 9 to 10 counter spells after sideboard, that's where it gets really really difficult. Finally, a threat on the battlefield okay. as well for Seth. What what do you see in here? Oh, a so negate. That's okay. a that's a second negate. Still not going to be enough, right? Because Maddie will go Goldspan Dragon. We're going to see see it coming into negate, into see it coming into negate, into negate. So Seth will ultimately win out on that counter fight, unless Maddie can find a mystical dispute off the top here. Oh, it's an iteration. That'll keep the train rolling along. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, this has been a heck of a game. Both players just stocking their hands with action. Finally, Seth is the, the first one to have a threat actually stay on the battlefield. Now, he hasn't actually had a chance to attack with this Bone Crusher yet, but hey, he's got one. Oh, it's all, I, was, I was like, this iteration is taking a while. Seth really does, he does not, not want like iteration <laughs> to resolve. Wow. He really does. He's like, hey, you know, he's probably the biggest advocate for that card, right? He's playing eight copies mm -hmm. of expressive iteration between standard and historic. Oh, yeah. He knows how good it is. Interesting. I would love to pick his brain about when, when you choose, because, you know, he's let a lot of stuff so go. And then he went on, but then he keeps countering one kind of in the late game here. Yeah, I was wondering if Maddie might might have considered going for it there. Looks like Maddie was okay with just not. Here comes Bone Crusher Giant. That's gonna meet a red cap melee. Seth is probably going to run out a tome here. Does. Can he run out the other one? He could, but I think he just wants to represent more cards. And, you know, one versus two tomes don't make a huge difference here just because his hand is already already pretty full. So if, if both the tomes are drawing you two cards a turn, I mean, you're going to get close to discarding anyways. Pretty full. You've changed, man. I it's mean, be they all haven't the done way anything. Full. It's got to be all Marshall? the way full. Seven or nothing. Library of Alexandria for life. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Pretty full. He's well, going to have like, yeah, seven five, next turn. Five cards is enough. Okay. Okay. All right. Gold's Patrick it on the stack. Oh, something's happening. Matty Quizma he trying to fight back. <laughs> Put a relevant spell on the stack. It's Goldspan Dragon, and now it wow, resolves. Wow. Just like that, it just resolves. So easy. That is interesting. So it looks like Seth is is content to fight over. But the this gives Maddie so much mana. Spells. It really does. But I guess he doesn't have 
Oh, remember, he boarded out a lot of those substantiates. He doesn't have a lot of protection here. Mm-hmm. He's got a pair of negates. That's that's what he's got. Yeah, and Seth, you know, probably just going to run out the red cap melees first and just keep kind of holding on to these side comings if he can afford it. Although that is a lot of treasure. Okay. Okay, so one of the side comings is going to target negate. I mean, at, at this point, I mean, you're you're pretty committed. Definitely. If if this if this dragon doesn't get to do anything, uh, your hand really doesn't do anything else. So. Is it? Is it red? Is it? I mean, this must be red cat melee time. Yeah. The treasure keeps piling up here for Maddie, but he is, in fact, out of counter magic. And this red yep. cap melee is going to send that dragon to the bin. So he made out like a bandit as far as treasure goes, but he did not win the battle. And his uh, his goldspan dragon is gone. Ooh, Alrun's Epiphany. That's a good thing to get, get rolling with. Yeah, that'll definitely buy you a, a good chunk of time here. You can go... And cards, yeah. You can go Maze Mind Tome, draw the card here. Play another one. Ooh, Shark Typhoon. Yeah. I mean, Seth at this point is just going to fall too far ahead on cards here. Maze Mind Tome is just absolutely fantastic. Um, especially in this matchup where basically both players don't do anything. Right, I mean, how many turns was that, right? Where just nothing happened. And now he can make just a massive shark token. Curious what he's looking for here as he's doing an upkeep scry. Just more counter Ooh, magic, there's maybe? not a very really <laughs> relevant spell. <laughs> yeah, Mystical Dispute not going to do a whole lot here. No, it's not. Uh, here comes Goldspan Dragon, though. The funny part is the dispute still isn't enough, even though all of the lands are tapped from <laughs> right. Maddie here. He could make him burn the treasures. The thing is, Seth has so much, so many threats already. I don't know how much he's going to value this Goldspan Dragon, right? He's got mm -hmm. double Faceless Haven in play, and he can also cycle Shark Typhoon for a big token. Right, and the two one ones will start doing their thing. Right. So yeah, he's just going to let it go. Plus, he has the Maze Mind Tomes doing work for him. All right, time to... Uh, Just cast spells. Do it the little way. <laughs> you know? It's not it's not Goldspan Dragon, but uh, it's honest work. And there's the Lord Dracus. And this is either getting countered or killed. Eh, we'll then, go for killed this time, Paul. And then we're probably going to mutate onto this one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, that's two cards. So this was probably it? getting countered. Yeah. Unless you want Maddie to get two spells from his graveyard back to his hand. Yeah, I definitely want to take a look at what he can, you can get. get. You can get negate plus potentially. Mm-hmm. Yeah, iteration would be totally a card here. I mean, if you're negating see it comings, this is like a double see it come. Excuse me, expressive iteration. This is basically 2x expressive iteration. Definitely. And we know how Seth feels about that. I mean, I mean. If you're willing to counter one, <laughs> you're right. definitely going to counter two. So he does. He fires that off. He's probably going to just sack the treasure to draw a card here. That's exactly what he does. Finds a land and finds another one off the top of the library. Okay, he's finally getting towards out of gas ah. territory. That said, he can draw two cards right now if he wants, or he can even fire up those faceless savings and just start pounding. I mean, Maddie's out of action, has no cards in hand at this point. Yeah, Maddie just wants a mutate creature. Get the value chain going here, right? A Vadrock or a Lord Dracus off the top would be great. But Maddie is at 12. Yeah, Ooh. and there's going to be a real big shark. That is, I mean. To be a 10-10. It's actually just lethal. Yeah. Wow. That's that's 12 in the air. That's game. <laughs> yep. Assuming that Seth goes for the biggest possible shark. I mean, 
I like going for lethal. Same. Yeah. Can't be yeah. countered. I, you know, you have a mystical dispute that doesn't do anything. I guess you could just draw two cards off of the tomes and take the longer approach, but nah. Go for the 10-10 no. Sharknado here. Put that thing on the stack. Seth's playing for 7-0. and oh. We have game. still not actually documented him ever losing a match. Never happened. And he continues his streak here as he is now improved to 7-0. and oh.